Russia's political crisis over, Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre resigns. Debate on the role of Speaker and Deputy Speaker. Implementation period of the new VPN rules extended by three months. Now, the new rules will be effective from September 25. The aim is to give sufficient time to MSME and VPN service providers. US launches partners in the Blue Pacific Initiative. This initiative is focused on the island countries of the Pacific region. It will help in curtailing the growing influence of China in the region. Discovery of world's largest bacterium in mangrove of Caribbean region. This bacterium can be seen even without a microscope. Genetic analysis revealed the organism to be a single bacterial cell. Another spyware named Hermit reported after Pegasus. This spyware developed by the Italian firm RCS Lab. The goal is to target high-profile people. Now, let's talk about the Kihoto Holohan judgment. Amidst the ongoing political upheaval in Maharashtra, the embattled Chief Minister of State, Uddhav Thakre, has announced his resignation from the post. With this move, the political crisis in the state has come to its denouncement. This has come post the Supreme Court has allowed the flow test ordered by Maharashtra Governor. Actually, about two-thirds of Shiv Sena MLAs had rebelled against their party. In such a scenario, the Deputy Speaker of the Maharashtra Legislative Assembly sent disqualification notices to 16 rebel MLAs. Moreover, the struggles of Uddhav faction escalated when the Supreme Court extended the deadline to reply to the notices till 12th of July 2022. The agitated faction had filed a petition in the Supreme Court challenging the disqualification notices that were issued to them. Moreover, in a setback to Uddhav Thakre faction, the Supreme Court restrained the Deputy Speaker from taking the decision and refused to stay the flow test. Also, as the political battle in Maharashtra moved to the Supreme Court, the role and powers of the Speaker and Deputy Speaker came in focus. In the context of the crisis, disenchanted leaders have made references to the landmark judgment in Kihoto Holohan versus Zashilu and others in their petition. In Kihoto Holohan case, the Apex Court had held that the Speaker or Deputy Speaker while deciding the disqualification petition under the 10th schedule as such a tribunal and therefore it is incumbent upon the Deputy Speaker to afford a reasonable opportunity of hearing and defending his case to the petitioner. In this case, the Apex Court had also upheld the broad discretion of the Speaker concerning the disqualification of the MLAs. Later on, it was also held that the Speaker's decision is not final and is subject to judicial review. Besides, the Apex Court had also stated in this case that the provisions of the 10th schedule do not infringe upon the democratic rights of the elected members of Parliament and State Assemblies. In addition, these provisions do not violate the freedom of expression under Article 105 and 194 of the Constitution. Recently, the Department of School Education and Literacy or DOSEL, Ministry of Education has released the PGID, that is Performance Grading Index for Districts for 2018 and 19 and 2019 and 20. This assesses the performance of school education system at the district level by creating an index for comprehensive analysis. The PGID structure comprises of total weightage of 600 points across 83 indicators like effective classroom transaction. Based on the success of state, PGI, PGID has been designed to grade the performance of all districts in school education. According to the Department of School Education and Literacy, the Indian education system is one of the largest education systems in the world. It encapsulates about 15 lakh schools, 97 lakh teachers and nearly 26 crore students from varied socio-economic background. PGID grades districts into 10 grades. Highest achievable grade is Daksh, which is for districts scoring more than 90% of the total points in that category or overall. The lowest grade in PGID is called Akanshi 3, which is for scores up to 10% of the total points. It is to be noted that none of the districts could achieve the highest grade Daksh in 2018-19 and 2019-2020. Recently, 
the Computer Emergency Response Team or CERT-N has extended the enforcement of the new VPN that is Virtual Private Network Rules by 3 months to September 25th, 2022. The extension is aimed at giving micro, small and medium enterprises enough time to plan on using data centers. Furthermore, virtual private service providers, cloud service providers and virtual private network service providers will also have reasonable time to implement mechanisms for validation of subscribers. It is worth mentioning that the new VPN rules were to be effective from 27th June 2022, but now these will be effective from 25th September 2022. The new rules require VPN service providers along with data centers and cloud service providers to store information such as names, email IDs, contact numbers and IP addresses of their customers for a period of five years. The data is to be given to the cert in when asked. Besides, any cybercrime must be reported to cert in within six hours of the same. It is to be noted that VPN is an encrypted connection between a device and a network on the internet. With the help of this encrypted connection, sensitive and private data are transmitted securely over the internet and it prevents unauthorized access to the data. VPN technology is widely used in the corporate world. Moving on, recently, Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi visited Germany for the G7 Group Summit. He had taken along a plethora of artistic gifts for each of the G7 leaders. Prime Minister gifted a Gulabi Meenakri brooch to the US President Joe Biden, while pieces of black pottery from Nizamabad, UP were gifted to Japanese PM Kishida Fumio. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa was gifted Dokra art made on the theme of Ramayana. Dokra art is considered to be a special craft of Chhattisgarh. Prime Minister Modi also met British Prime Minister Boris Johnson at the G7 summit. A hand-painted tea set from Uttar Pradesh's Buland Shahar was meant for British Prime Minister Boris Johnson. It is worth mentioning that Gulabi Meenakari is one of the rare crafts of India. Gulabi Meenakari has got a GI tag. This craft is practiced by the artists residing on the streets of Varanasi near the Gayaghat. Meenakari is an art form from Persia and involves coloring the surface of metals by fusing different colors. This art was brought to the city of Varanasi by Persian enamelists during the Mughal era around the early 17th century. Dokra craft is mainly practiced in Bastar district of Chhattisgarh. In this art, idols, utensils and other daily use items are made by casting a mixture of metal like copper, zinc and tin. Beeswax is used in the process. Hence, it is also called lost wax process. It was started 4000 years ago. According to historians, pieces of evidence of Dokra art have also been found in Harappa and Mohenjo-daro civilizations. The oldest specimen of an idol made using Dokra art is believed to be the Nartiki idol found during the excavations in Mohenjo-daro. Recently, the US and its allies Australia, New Zealand, Japan and the United Kingdom have launched a new initiative called Partners in the Blue Pacific. This initiative aims to counter China's aggressive push to increase its Pacific sphere of influence. It will promote effective and efficient cooperation with small island countries of the region. The Partners in the Blue Pacific is a five-nation informal mechanism to support Pacific Islands and to boost diplomatic economic ties in the region. The areas where it aims to enhance cooperation include climate crises, connectivity and transportation, maritime security and protection, health, prosperity and education. It also speaks of enhancing prosperity, resilience and security in the Pacific through closer cooperation. The initiative members have also declared that they will elevate Pacific regionalism and forge stronger ties with the Pacific Island Forums. In a joint statement released to announce the initiative, the five member nations said that at every stage, they will be led and guided by the Pacific Islands. It is noteworthy that China had signed a security pact with Solomon Islands in April 2022. The deal flagged serious concerns about the Chinese military getting a base in the Southern Pacific, close to the US island territory of Guam and right next to Australia and New Zealand. Furthermore, the geostrategic competition in the region has intensified of late after China pushed for a sweeping common development vision agreement with 10 Pacific nations. Therefore, the US and its allies intend to gain the trust of the Pacific Islands by increasing cooperation and partnership with them, thereby 
curbing China's dominance in the region. Significantly, before launching the Partners in the Blue Pacific, the US and its partners had started the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework for Prosperity Initiative. It is a trade-boosting play in the region with 13 nations including the US, Australia, India and Japan. Recently, the Reserve Bank of India or RBI has unveiled the Payments Vision 2025 document. This vision document has been prepared under the guidance of the Board for Regulation and Supervision of Payment and Settlement System of RBI. Earlier, RBI had issued Payments Vision 2019-21. to The recently released Payments Vision 2025 is the next chapter of Payments Vision 2019-21. The Payments Vision 2025 document is presented across the five anchor goalposts of integrity, inclusion, innovation, institutionalization, and internationalization. It has the core theme of e-payments for everyone, everywhere, every time, or four E's, and aims to provide every user with safe, secure, fast, convenient, accessible, and affordable e-payment options. It seeks a three-fold jump in the number of digital payments, is progressive and aims to establish India as a powerhouse of payments globally. In view of the emerging geopolitic risks, the document also talks about ring fencing of domestic payment systems, including the need to mandate domestic processing of payment transactions. RBI has also proposed several initiatives to achieve the goals of the vision document. Some of them are volume of check based payments to be less than 0.25% of the total retail payment, more than three times increase in number of digital payment transaction. Global outreach of UPI, RTGS, NEFT and Rupee cards with internationalization and increase in debt card transactions at point of sale by 20%. Recently, Niti Aayog has released a report titled India's Booming Gig and Platform Economy. The report presents a comprehensive view and recommendations on the gig and platform economy in India. It also provides a scientific approach to estimate the current size and job creation potential of the sector. The data published in the recent report reveals that around 77 lakh workers were part of the gig economy in the year 2020-21. They constituted 2.6% of the non-agricultural workforce or 1.5% of the total workforce in India. The report also holds that 2.35 crore are likely to be a part of the gig economy by the year 2029-2030. According to the report, currently about 47% of the gig workforce is in the medium-skilled jobs, about 22% in high-skilled jobs and about 31% in low-skilled jobs. Trend shows that the concentration of workers in medium skills is gradually declining and that of the low-skilled and high-skilled is increasing. The report highlights the opportunities and challenges of the gig and platform economy and also presents global best practices on various social security initiatives. The report also provides details of the strategies for skill development and job creation of the workers in the gig platform sector. Moreover, the report recommends accelerating access to finance to platform personnel through specifically designed financial products. The gig economy refers to an employment system where employees are not hired on a permanent basis but are hired on contracts for a short period and they are paid a fixed remuneration for their work. Recently. Scientists have discovered the world's largest bacteria in a Caribbean mangrove swamp. Most bacteria are microscopic, which are not visible to the naked eye. But this one is so big, it can be seen with the naked eye. The thin white filament, approximately the size of a human eyelash, is by far the largest bacterium known to date. A French biologist had found the first example of this bacterium clinging to sunken mangrove leaves in the archipelago of Guadeloupe in 2009. But he didn't immediately know it was a bacterium because of its surprisingly large size. Only later, genetic analysis revealed the organism to be a single bacterial cell. It has been named Theo Margarita Magnifica or Magnificent Sulphur Pearl. It is worth mentioning that the Guadeloupe Archipelago is a French territory located in the Eastern Caribbean Sea. Scientists have not yet been able to grow this bacteria in lab culture, but the researchers say that the cell has a structure that's unusual for bacteria. It has a large central compartment or vacuole. This vacuole distinguishes it from other bacteria. It also allows some cell functions to happen in that controlled environment instead of throughout the cell. 
the acquisition of this large central vacuole definitely helps a cell to bypass physical limitations on how big a cell can be. It is to be noted that bacteria have been placed in the Monera Kingdom category under the classification of organisms. Bacteria are unicellular organism and they lack a nucleus. Cell walls are present in bacteria. Now, after Pegasus spyware, Hermit spyware is in the headlines these days. According to reports, it has been developed by an Italian vendor called RCS Lab. It was first reported by cybersecurity researchers at San Francisco-based cybersecurity firm Lookout. Recently, Google's Threat Analysis Group had also posted a detailed blog explaining how they believed Hermit was used to target devices. Hermit spyware is also being used by governments of various countries like Italy, Kazakhstan to target high-profile officials like businessmen, human rights activists, journalists, academicians and government officials through SMS messages. Hermit is a spyware developed on the lines of Pegasus by NSO Group, an Israeli firm. Once installed on a device, it can record audio on a device, carry out unauthorized calls and carry out many unauthorized activities. The spyware can steal stored account, emails, contacts, browser bookmarks, searches and calendar events. Furthermore, it can also take pictures on the device, steal device information such as details about applications, the kernel information, model, manufacturer, OS, security patch, phone number, etc. It can also download and install APK or Android application package file on a compromised phone. It can gain access to the root or the privilege access of an Android system. The spyware can also upload files from the device, read notifications, and take pictures of the screen. Recently, the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs launched revised Swachh certification protocols for ODF, ODF Plus, and ODF Double Plus and Water Plus certifications. The revised protocols aims to sustain open defecation free status across urban India while steadfastly moving towards new sanitation goals. These protocols are in line with the objectives of Swachh Bharat Mission Urban 2.0. It is worth mentioning that these protocols contain provision for robust infrastructure with reliable operations and maintenance mechanisms to achieve the goal of clean urban India. These provisions are to encourage cities for the same. Under ODF category, a robust monitoring mechanism will be ensured by increasing the number of service sample size and location types. Under ODF plus categories, focus will be on functionality of community and public toilets and innovative operation and maintenance business models for their sustainability in the long run. Under ODF Double Plus category, emphasis will be on mechanized cleaning of septic tanks and sewers, safe collection and treatment of used water, as well as safe management of fecal sludge. Besides, under Water Plus category, focus will be on the collection, transportation, treatment and reuse of both used water and fecal sludge to prevent environmental pollution. For towns having population more than 20,000, a minimum of 25% household will be connected to sewerage network. Also, no untreated used water will be let out in environment. It is to be noted that Swachh Bharat Mission Urban 2.0 was announced in the budget 2021-22 for the period 21-26. And it is being implemented in continuation for the first phase. Significantly, the second phase of the Swachh Bharat Mission Urban was launched by the Prime Minister on 1st October 2021. Recently, the Union Minister for Road Transport and Highways approved the draft notification to introduce Bharat NCAP or Bharat New Car Assessment Program. This program is to be implemented from April 2023. This is a program related to car crash testing in which the testing protocols of Bharat NCAP shall be aligned with the global crash test protocols. The initiative is aimed at making mobility safer amidst the country witnessing enormous road accidents. This program will allow a healthy competition among the original equipment manufacturers in India to manufacture safer vehicles. Under Bharat NCAP, automobiles in India shall be accorded star ratings based structural and passenger safety in cars. Bharat NCAP will serve as a consumer-centric platform, allowing customers to opt for safer cars based upon their star ratings. Moreover, it will also allow the original equipment manufacturers to get their vehicles tested at India's own in-house testing facility. 
the five star rating system under the Bharat NCAP will assign cars between one to five stars based on how well they perform in crash tests. One star will indicate that the vehicle has the lowest safety standards, while five star rating will indicate that the vehicle has good safety standards. The overall assessment is based on the performance of the vehicle under three broad categories adult occupant protection, child occupant protection, and safety assist technology. The government believes that this initiative will not only ensure structural and passenger safety but will also increase the export worthiness of Indian automobiles. Besides, it will also prove to be a critical instrument in making our automobile industry number one automobile hub in the world. Significantly, the government of India wanted to fix the safety features of automobiles since long time due to high number of deaths on account of road accidents in India. According to the International Road Federation, about 2 lakh people die annually in India owing to the road accidents. Hence, the government of India has set a target of reducing the same by 50% by 2024. Let us now look at the five questions based on the bulletin. Questions for this series are, first question is, consider the following statements. 1. In the Kihoto Holohan case, the Supreme Court has held that the Speaker or the Deputy Speaker acts as a tribunal while deciding the disqualification of MLAs under the anti-defection law. 2. The Speaker's decision regarding the disqualification of MLAs will not be final, that is, it is subject to judicial review. Which of the above statement or statements is or are correct? One only, two only, both one and two or neither one nor two. Next question is consider the following statements with reference to the G7 group. 1. G7 summit was held in Japan in 2022. 2. In this summit, the Indian Prime Minister presented the pink Minakari brooch to US President Joe Biden. 3. Pink Minakari is a famous craft of Nani Prayagraj. 4. Pink Minakari has got GI tag. Which of the above statement or statements is or are correct? One only, two only, one and two only, or three and four only. Next question is, consider the following statements. One, the report titled India's Booming Gig and Platform Economy has been released by the Ministry of Commerce and Industry through Niti Aayog. Two, according to the report, currently about 47% of the gig work is in medium-skilled jobs about 22% in high-skilled jobs and about 31% in low-skilled jobs. Which of the above statement or statements is or are correct? One only, two only, both one and two or neither one nor two. Next question is, consider the following statements. One, recently scientists have discovered the world's biggest bacterium in the mangrove forest of the Caribbean swampy region. 2. A large vacuole in the bacterium differentiates it from other bacteria. Which of the above statement or statements is or are correct? One only, two only, both one and two or neither one nor two. Last question is, consider the following statements. 1. Hermit spyware is being used to target high profile Android and iPhone users. 2. Hermit spyware is developed on the lines of Pegasus spyware of Israeli firm NSO Group. Which of the above statement or statements is or are not correct? 1 only, 2 only, both 1 and 2 or neither 1 nor 2. Recently, the payroll automation for disbursement of monthly allowances platform was launched by the Ministry of Defence for the Indian Coast Guard. This platform based on modern technology will help in ensuring timely disbursement of salaries and allowances of Indian Coast Guard personnel without any complicated process. Recently, an e-learning platform called Dark Karma Yogi was launched by the Minister of Communications, Sri Ashwini Vaishnav. This portal aims at upgrading Grameen Dark Sevaks and providing better services to the customers. However, departmental employees and Grameen Dark Sevaks will be able to get training anytime, anywhere as per their convenience. This portal is based on the concept of Mission Karma Yogi of Sri Narendra Modi. Recently, the single-use plastic buyback scheme was launched by the Himachal Pradesh government. Under this scheme, students will have to bring single-use plastic items from their homes and deposit these items in schools. The government will purchase these items deposited by the students from schools and colleges. Significantly, the central government has announced a complete ban on single-use plastic items from 1st July 2022. 
Recently, the high-speed expandable aerial target Abhyas was successfully test fired from the integrated test range at Chandipur, Odisha. This target aircraft was flown at a low altitude with a ground-based controller. It was monitored by several tracking sensors including radar and electro-optical targeting systems. The aerial target Abhyas is capable of flying and attacking enemy ships without any human intervention. Abhyas has been manufactured by DRDO. The Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs chaired by the Prime Minister has approved the proposal for the computerization of primary agricultural credit societies. Under this scheme, the computerization of 63,000 agricultural credit societies will be done with an expenditure of 2,516 crore rupees. The computerization process includes programs such as data collection, cyber security, the digitization of existing records, maintenance and training. It aims at preparing primary agricultural credit societies as nodal service delivery centers at the panchayat level and improving the administrative transparency and efficiency of the societies. The Ministry of Coal has sent a proposal to the Ministry of Environment for including five coal mine lakes in the Ramsar list. Coal India Limited, in collaboration with the Ministry of Environment, has identified these mine lakes located in the states of West Bengal, Odisha, Jharkhand, and Madhya Pradesh. Coal India Limited argues that these mine lakes are regularly visited by various species of birds. Hence, it is necessary to conserve these mine lakes for protecting the environment and for creating a habitat for birds. However, Coal India Limited has improved the environment around these water bodies through massive tree plantations and other soil moisture conservation activities. Despite major constraints, India exported around 14 metric tons of seafood products worth about 58 crore rupees during the financial year 2021-22. India had exported about 11 metric tons of seafood products worth about 44 crore rupees during the last financial year. It is worth noting that the highest demand in seafood products was for the Indian shrimp. The US, China and European Union were respectively the first, second and third largest importers of India's seafood products. Social Empowerment Camp was organized in Trichy, Tamil Nadu on 1st July 2022. Accessories will be distributed among the differently abled persons and other major assistance will also be provided to them during this camp. The distribution of aids and assistive devices to the differently abled persons is being done under ADIP scheme that is Scheme of Assistance to Disabled Persons for Purchase under Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment, Government of India. Recently, the National Institute of Urban Affairs and World Resource Institute India have launched the India Forum for Nature-Based Solutions. It aims at overcoming the challenges posed by climate change such as heat waves, urban floods, air and water pollution, etc. It also aims at exploring ecosystem-based services and nature-based solutions as cost-effective and sustainable methods. India Forum will also work to explore a range of measures including addressing various social challenges and empowering vulnerable urban communities affected by climate change-related disasters. Recently, the new premises of the Ministry of Commerce and Industry that is Manijya Bhavan was inaugurated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi in New Delhi. The Niryat portal was also launched during this inaugural function. Niryat portal will ensure a one-stop platform for the customers so that they can get all the necessary information related to India's foreign trade in one place. It will also provide support in fulfilling and achieving the export goals of the Government of India. Recently, the G7 Group Summit was held in Germany. At this summit, the leaders of the G7 Group countries have launched a $600 billion partnership for global infrastructure and investment plan to counter China's Belt and Road Initiative program. The G7 countries have decided to introduce an alternative mechanism of their own, referring to infrastructure projects being run and funded by China globally. Thank you.